Here's an interesting thought. Did you know that it's been over a year since the Ingenuity took its first flight? 419 days as a matter of fact as of making of this video. A mission that was only supposed to last for over a month, with the probe that was supposed to only fly 5 times. Yet it managed to succeed flying 28 times, reaching a distance of almost 7 kilometers and staying in the air for 54 minutes. And that's just absolutely mind-blowing when you think about this flying on a completely different planet that barely has any atmosphere, less than 1% of atmospheric pressure on the surface of our own planet. Yet it works, and it worked really well for over a year, although it's now having its first issues. A few issues as a matter of fact. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to be discussing the Ingenuity probe once again and talk about some of the recent achievements along with the new issues that it's facing, including the issues that might officially end this project. Although possibly not yet, but maybe in the next few months. And some of the first issues it started to experience were back in early May. For approximately two days, on May 3rd and May 4th, the Ingenuity team lost contact with this probe. They're not entirely sure why yet, but they think it's because of the battery. The battery located right here that essentially is responsible for powering everything on this probe. And they think it's because it wasn't charging properly, which could in theory create a problem as the Martian winter approaches and as things become slightly more difficult on the surface of the planet. And the biggest challenge for the probe right now is to try to survive the cold months when the temperature gets to minus 125 Celsius or approximately minus 200 Fahrenheit. With the biggest challenge being keeping everything warm on the inside. And because of the temperatures that are going to be present on the surface here, some of the scientists have even suggested that maybe they're going to put the probe into a hibernation mode, simply to make retaining heat on the inside a little bit easier. But the production of power for this particular probe has actually become a bit of an issue, and you might be able to even see why. Just like with the inside probe, the ingenuity is slowly being coated with dust. And for the inside mission, that's literally the reason why the mission has to end. And so something similar is now happening to the helicopter, despite the fact that it's a helicopter where things do move around. Yet the dust layer seems to have accumulated to the point where it might now endanger the probe. And this is entirely due to the conditions present in this particular region of Mars, inside the Jezero crater. Turns out this crater is extremely windy and has a lot of different windstorms happening all the time. One of the recent images from the Perseverance rover that operates using nuclear power and doesn't depend on the solar energy revealed several dust devils that you can actually see right there that seem to happen very often in this location. But they also seem to be much more powerful than in other locations previously investigated. And this actually happens daily, as a matter of fact at least four times a day. And so because of these very common dust storms, most of this dust ends up flying around and accumulating on various surfaces. And although in theory, if one of these dust devils passes right by the helicopter, it might actually even clear the panels of the dust, something that for example happened to the Spirit Rover a few years ago, as of right now, it hasn't happened, and so instead the dust ends up accumulating and making things worse. But that's the first problem the probe started to experience just over a month ago from when I'm making this video. Now we have this other issue. There's now an issue with an instrument known as inclinometer. The instrument responsible for, well, basically, measuring the acceleration and the angular rates of ascent and descent in three dimensions. You actually probably have something very similar inside your phone that basically allows the phones to sort of know what orientation they have. But after the most recent flight, flight number 28, this navigation sensor suddenly stopped working. And so in some sense, Ingenuity has now lost its sense of direction. In other words, it's unable to measure its own inclination and its own acceleration. And so does that mean that this is game over for the mission? Well, NASA is really smart. Turns out it's not. This helicopter has been built with a lot of redundancy systems. As a matter of fact, the software itself already contains a patch that anticipated this issue. The patch that's essentially going to be sending fake data to a lot of other instruments, pretending that inclinometer still works. And since the other instruments are still okay, such as the laser rangefinder that measures the distance, and the navigation camera that uses actual visual information to try to guide the helicopter as it flies, theoretically, it's still possible to proceed with the mission and to conduct 29th flight. 
Although in this case, the algorithm still needs to receive some of the information about the pitch altitude and the role of the helicopter itself. That's of course the main purpose for the inclinometer. And so generally it would send certain types of information and certain types of data to other instruments. But in this case, it seems to be sending some kind of garbage data. And so to solve this problem, the patch is now going to replace the garbage data with basically fake data. And assuming that the helicopter doesn't do any crazy maneuvers, it still should be possible for it to fly and to possibly even fly normally, based on the previous data available from previous flights. And so at the moment, for a few weeks now, NASA engineers have been trying to apply and to test various patches by using the models here on Earth to see if they're actually going to work on Mars, specifically preparing for that 29th flight. We don't really know if it's going to work yet, but they think it might. And if it does, this is a completely new record, flying a probe with a broken instrument, a helicopter, in very hostile conditions, and way past its due date. A mission that just doesn't seem to want to end. And interestingly enough, since the last video I made about this mission, when I discussed the first 23 flights, during the 25th flight, it now has even beat its previous records, the longest distance and the highest speed of any flight so far. During that mission, it managed to fly for over 708 meters at a speed of about 5.5 meters per second. And during the previous flight, Flight 24, the engineers also realized that you don't really have to spin the rotors as fast anymore because the density of air on Mars has increased. And so in this case, the helicopter was actually able to fly spinning the rotors at just over 2500 RPM as opposed to 2700 RPM that was used during the previous flights. And that's actually because the air density on the red planet has increased because of the approach of the fall, as everything slowly falls to the surface and the air becomes a little bit denser. Which means that it's a little bit thinner during the Martian summer. And then during the last two flights, the ingenuity slowly made its way closer and closer to the river delta. And for now, it's just basically resting, not really doing anything specifically interesting. Although after a month on the ground, there's a chance that it might have accumulated even more dust, and so restarting the mission for the next flight might be even more challenging. And so at the moment, we don't really know if the Flight 29 is actually going to happen. Nevertheless, you have to remember, it's been over a year now. All of this has been functioning way, way past the due date and past expectations, and so what the NASA scientists have been able to achieve so far is already mind-blowing and will very likely teach us so much about Mars in general and provide a lot of data for some of the future helicopter missions as well. Something I've discussed in one of the previous videos and you can learn about in the video in the description below. But I guess for now, if the mission does finish, it means that all of the focus is then going to be on the Perseverance rover that's actually been doing a lot of science already. Which means that in some of the future videos, we're probably going to be mostly focusing on the Perseverance rover, not so much on the helicopter anymore. And so for now, there's maybe a slight chance that this is the end of the mission. And there's a slight chance that the mission will now be about perseverance only. But if anything changes, I'm going to make sure to follow this up with another video, which means that you should probably subscribe. On that note, check out some of the previous videos about the mission and some of the facts we'll learn about it in some of the videos in the description below, or possibly somewhere right there as well. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the one full person t-shirt that has the beautiful helicopter as part of its design in the description below as well. Either way, come back tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye-bye.